Right, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what the term the streets will never forget meant exactly, so I had to look it up. Apparently the phrase applies to cult heroes who for one reason or another dazzle Premier League audiences with their ability and skill. I think it's safe to say that Fred isn't going to be on this list anytime soon, sorry lad. Over the years, the Premier League has seen some of football's greatest talents come and go through its rather expensive front door, and this got me thinking about the players who couldn't quite reach the top of the mountain, but still gave us moments, or seasons even, of individual brilliance that will be remembered for years to come. Welcome to Good Sport Reviews, my name is Lewis and this is my list for the top 10 Premier League players the streets will never forget. Number 10, Clint Dempsey. There's no particular order for this list. A lot of these lads had absolutely bonkers seasons in the Premier League, but at some point had dipped or made the move to a different club or fell off a cliff faster than a lemming. Case in point, Clint Dempsey, who in my opinion is the best American outfield player Premier League has ever seen. It's not exactly hard when DeAndre Yedlin and Landon Donovan are your competition. Dempsey set the league on fire during his team at Fulham and in his first season recorded a 1-0 victory over Liverpool which saw him take the club from relegation to survival. Very nice start indeed. Managers tried to keep Dempsey out of the side with Roy Hodgson only starting Dempsey once in his first 11 games during the 08-09 season. Savvy business sense from a man who bought Paul Konchesky for Liverpool. Again why? Why was he there? But he kept coming back with a vengeance and went on to score 50 goals in the league and scored one of the most important goals in Fulham's history, scoring the winner in the Europa League semi-final match against Juventus, a superb player who made the move to Tottenham and had a drop off for him. But he still will be remembered as a key component in Fulham's history. Number 9, Two Guy Karamoglu. When you think of long-range finishers, who do you think of? Gerard. Lampard, Scholes, Risa, Van Persie, or do you take the connoisseur's choice and say two guy? This man had a wand of a right foot, and during his eight years at Ewood Park, he smoked the fences like apparently he smoked 20 a day. Good for him. A maestro on the ball, two guy embarrassed the fences on a regular and consistent basis. And when your first goal is a lob from outside the box into the top corner in a 7 1 victory over West Ham, you know you've got talent. He was an integral part of the club's success, and while there were points where he blew hot and cold, he could still pop up with an incredible goal and was a natural dribbler of the ball, able to drop the shoulder and shimmy past Premier League defenders with ease. Number 8, Demba Bar. Demba Bar, the man who's been passed around football clubs more than a joint in a university, made his mark during his time in the Premier League when he played at West Ham, Newcastle and Chelsea. He finished with 7 goals in 12 games during his time with West Ham, a short stint as he was on the pay-as-you-play basis after the club discovered a knee injury during the Stoke Medical which collapsed that summer. He then moved to Newcastle following the Irons relegation and went on to forge a legacy as a cult hero at the Magpies, scoring a hat-trick against Blackburn, a hat-trick against Stoke, and at the time of the parting for the AFCON in 2012, he was the league's second highest goal scorer behind only Robin Van Persie. He ended the season with 16 goals and forged a deadly partnership with fellow countryman Papi Cisse. He moved to Chelsea in 2013 for around £7 million, it's speculated apparently, and while he couldn't find the same goal scoring form that made him an icon on Tyneside, he still came up with valuable moments, including the goal at Anfield following Gerard's slip in the title race. And that makes me feel like I need a drink just thinking about it. He was a physically strong striker who'd score a terrific goal, and as mentioned, he forged one of the greatest Premier League partnerships with. Number 7, Papi Cisse. A spell at a club that is filled with more highlights than a Burnley Premier League match. Then again, there's Bob Ross painting sessions that have more highlights than a Burnley match nowadays, so yeah. Anyway, Papi Cissé established himself as one of the biggest cult heroes in Premier League history when he joined Newcastle United back in 2012 and set up putting the fear of God into defensive back line. He scored 44 goals for the Black and White Fight All Night Brigade and scored incredible goals, including a chip over the Swansea goalkeeper while he was actually falling away from the ball, a brace against Liverpool and a 2-0 win, and of course one of the most incredible goals in Premier League history where from 37 yards out, Cissé volleyed the ball from the outside of his boot and it curled 
perfectly over Petacek and into the top corner of the goal. It is to this day one of the most ridiculous and impossible goals ever scored in the Premier League and even Czech and Drogba's reactions told you how good it was. And what's even more shocking is his first goal in the match was actually brilliant. It was, it's not spoken about too much because of the wonder goal. For the short time he was in this form, he was unplayable and alongside the previously mentioned Demba Bar, they were actually the most feared strike partnership in the Premier League at one point. Number six, Hatem Ben Arthur. Well done to Newcastle for getting three in a row. God, any club produced skillful players that didn't quite make it to the highest level like Newcastle? Uh, I don't think so. Must be something in the Nuki Brown that they drink. Despite that, Ben Arthur is one of the biggest what ifs in Premier League history with players and fans saying he's one of the biggest talents the league has ever seen. But because of attitude and discipline problems, he was never able to quite make it to the highest peak of the mountain. Look back at some of his highlights and you will see a player who could drift past defenders like a hot knife through ball. He was he put fear amongst Premier League teams and during his time at Newcastle he was actually able to become a fan favourite because despite his obvious attitude problems and lack of professionalism, the goals he scored against Bolton in 2012 was a prime example of his ability with the ball. In his own half, Ben Arthur proceeded to glide past four Bolton players before slotting it past Adam Bogdan in a moment of magic that was to be honest, there I say it, Messi-esque. He had all the makings of a true footballing superstar and moments like his long-range strike against Everton and his strikes into the bottom corner against Arsenal and Fulham just showed this off to everyone. He could have been one of the best in the world and while he would never go on to reach his potential, he still will never be forgotten by Premier League supporters. Number five, JJ Okocha. The man so nice they named him JJ twice. This was the Premier League's answer to Ronaldinho. The man who in Sam Allardyce's Bolton was able to express himself and show off what football's meant to be about. Skillful displays of talent, rainbow flicks, elasticos, the lot. He is one of the most entertaining players that has ever set foot in the Premier League and the fact that Bolton signed him on a free transfer from PSG following the 2002 World Cup is insanity given what he would go on to do at the club. He steered them away from relegation in his first season and scored that goal against West Ham in the process, became club captain and led them to a cup final in 2004, only losing to Middlesbrough in the final. Yes, his comments toward the end of his time at the club may have put a bit of a damper on things when he said the spell at Bolton was a waste of time because they didn't invest more. I mean, bloody hell. But he was at times a mercurial player and one of the league was better off for having been in it. Number four, Andre R. Chavin. I mean, it might be a bit of a statement that will probably be met with vast criticism, but I think that Andre R. Chavin had one of the best ever individual performances in Premier League history when he rolled up to Anfield and went all Mother Russia on us, scoring four goals in one of the greatest games in the history of the league. He arrived at Arsenal in 2009 with big expectations due to the nightmare the club had trying to sign him, with the deal actually going past deadline day itself by 24 hours. But that did stop him from his showing in his first few seasons at the Gunners that he was a goal scoring powerhouse and at point he won two player of the month awards in his first five se five months there and was even captain at one point towards the end of the season. He turned up in big moments scoring the equaliser when Arsenal were losing against Everton. Again this after scoring four at Anfield in one game he then came back the next season and scored that against us again and of course that incredible incredible winner against Barcelona in the Champions League. A moment that will live on in Arsenal history forever. He definitely tailed off towards the end, even getting booed by fans or getting subbed on for Oxlade Chamberlain, despite rumours that the boos were actually aimed at the substitution itself, not at Arshavin. But he shone so brightly in the league for those first few years, it can kind of be excused, and he can be remembered as one of the most entertaining players in Premier League history. Number three, Michu. Right, arguably, JJ Okocha should be higher. You could even say maybe Arshavin to an extent. But whenever people say the phrase, the streets will never forget, this man's face in that iconic Swansea shirt instantly comes to mind. He is the definition of the phrase because when he arrived, he set about doing to the Premier League what Anthony Joshua did to Francis Ngannou, scoring 20 goals in 52 games for the newly promoted side, which may not seem like a lot, but you have to consider how hard it is for promoted sides to find that prolific goal scorer to keep them in the division. Brentford have Ivan Tony, Aston Villa have Ollie Watkins. And for Swansea to get this one, 
one for two million pounds is nothing short of genius. He scored twice and assisted on his debut against QPR, proceeded to score against West Ham, Sunderland, and Arsenal and Chelsea in the FA Cup and League Cups, respectively. And in the process of this, he spearheaded an attack alongside the likes of Nathan Dyer, Scott Sinclair, to a League Cup final, where he scored in the 5 0 route over Bradford, winning the club their first major trophy since 2006. He had one good season, his injuries had a bit of a major impact on him the next season during the 13 14 campaign, but this one season made him a legend amongst both Swansea and Premier League supporters. Number two, Adel Tarrap. Right, just want to get this very clear before you all start. I know Tarrap in the Premier League blew hotter and colder than a firmer stat. And at the peak of his powers were in the championship sort of during the 2009 to 2011 period but my good lord this man had about as much talent in football as anyone when we talked before about ben arthur lacking discipline that goes double for a delta rap the man who publicly slated tottenham while still at the club saying he wished he'd come to arsenal Somewhere, Sol Campbell's little ears are twitching, because that's something that he certainly enjoyed. A man who lied about having a family emergency just so he could go on a night out. And a man who regularly received criticism from teammates during his time in the Premier League. What can't be criticised, however, was his ability to dribble past defenders like they were made out of air. He could easily beat three or four players at once and glided like it was a work of art. When you think of talents who didn't quite achieve what they should have, Ben Arthur's there, Mario Balotelli's there, but a Delta Rap is possible the top of that list he scored nothing but wonder goals after beating basically an entire team and he regularly embarrassed defenders like i said earlier this was mostly in the championship but he still had glimpses of this ability in the premier league and he's so much like michu that when you say this phrase he's one of the first players that pops up in your head possibly the first and number one dimitri payet Dimitri Payet is one of the most naturally talented players the Premier League has ever seen there. I said it. This man had it all during his two years at West Ham. He was a beautiful passer of the ball, a sublime dribbler, and scored some of the most outrageous free kicks in the history of the league. In particular, that free kick against Crystal Palace that was so good, it looked like it defied physics going into essentially the opposite corner of the goal where the keeper was stood and putting it so perfectly into the top corner that he couldn't even save it despite being on that side scored another against manchester united one against bournemouth and on a regular basis he would embarrass teams not just defenses one thing that isn't spoken about enough as well is the fact that despite all this he didn't actually want to be at the club you see marseille had to sell him due to financial problems and he never wanted to leave the french side so the fact that he performed like a man possessed despite his heart still being back home is one of the biggest stories around this player he's one of the most exciting players so much that west ham paid him one million pounds just to try and keep him at the club and gave him a contract worth 125 grand a week because he was so integral to the team he's without a doubt the best player that the streets will never forget in premier league history and that is my list. Please leave a comment down below if I've missed anyone. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.